When you think of pint-sized powerhouse, you think of something small but mighty, and that's exactly what these are. But not only that, these are actually kind of a retro refit. As you might have guessed, we're going to recreate a speaker from the 80s. Not too long ago, me and Zarbo Audio Projects wanted to get together and do a collaboration project. Zarbo decided that he was going to build the boxes, and so he built those. And this video is going to be a little bit different because of that. Usually, you're going to be watching me do an entire speaker build, but not this. Instead, this video is going to focus on the heart of the speaker. It's going to focus on the crossover and the DSP, because this is actually a hybrid system. A hybrid system basically means you're going to do part passive physical crossover and part DSP. Now, why would we want that on this particular build? Well, let me explain it to you. We're using the KABD 4100 board. That's a four channel amplifier that can power up to each channel up to 100 watts each, so 400 watts total, supposedly. This particular build, though, has three speakers. It has a subwoofer, down firing eight inch high excursion powered subwoofer. Each one of these has their own subwoofer in it. Pretty amazing. Along with a mid-range and a tweeter. That's a total of six different drivers in the pair of speakers. And in order to do a fully active DSP crossover, you would need to have a channel for each one of those speakers. Now we could just buy another amplifier and then hook up two amplifiers and then we could solve that problem. But the amplifier itself is relatively expensive and that would add quite a bit of cost to it. Or we could just do a passive crossover on the mid-range and the tweeter and use this amplifier to power the subwoofer and then the mid-range and tweeter separately. Very similar to what I did on the Dynas. In fact, this build is kind of like the Dynas when you think about it in the essence that it has the powered subwoofer. Tom actually chose the design and here's what happened. Uh, back in the 80s, Tom had seen these speakers that he really liked and they were from Radio Shack and he always wanted a pair. And unfortunately now the company is defunct. You can't buy them. You might be able to find some use somewhere, but it's just not the same. And so we wanted to take those speakers and remake them. So revitalize them for today's standards, hence adding the DSP and of course the passive crossover to it. So that's exactly what we did. Now, the first thing I had to do was to determine the passive crossover on my two drivers here. Now, we have a one-inch tweeter by Dayton Audio and a four-inch mid-range with a copper shortening ring, which was picked purposely to keep lower distortion at higher volumes. Now, once I took those measurements of my frequency response, I also took measurements of the distortion because for me, this has to sound great at high volumes. You want to be able to pump these up at a party, have those eight inch woofers going. And you want to be able to really make that sound very good. So I had to measure distortion. And the interesting thing that I found was in a sealed box, this particular four inch mid range had a really good distortion all the way across its bandwidth up until about 150 Hertz and really a hundred Hertz after it's really where we were starting to see the distortion really rise on that. And so that told me that our digital crossover between the subwoofer and the mid-range was going to have to uh, cut out those frequencies on the mid-range. And so first thing I did is I started creating the crossover between the mid-range and the tweeter. I decided a third order on the tweeter to cut down the distortion at higher volumes uh, on the tweeter's low end. And then we just did a simple L pad. Now, believe it or not, the response was pretty good. We're looking at plus or minus two and a half decibels, but I wanted these audio file flat when we were done with them. And so in order to do that, I employed a program called Rephase. Now this is a DSP trick that I've learned from uh, Elliot Designs. I'll make sure to link his videos below and make sure to subscribe because I'm also gonna do a video on it specifically for the KABD amplifiers so that you know how to utilize it with these particular amplifiers. But once I took those measurements in of the finalized completed crossover, I was able to implement what we call a linear phase. And this makes a bunch of small minute uh, changes to be able to get this, well, pretty ruler flat as you can tell. And my goal was to get it to be about plus or minus one decibel. Yeah, I said one decibel. 
And yeah, it was able to do that with the use of this program. And this is the uh, finalized response with that. It was pretty impressive. Once I finished that, I still had to work on the digital crossover a little. Also wanted to make a really sharp crossover on the mid-range, but I also want you to be able to control your bass and treble, right? Because there's no sense in having an eight inch powered subwoofer in each one of these speakers if you can't turn it up to jam out. I mean, that's just the way I look at it at least. Luckily, with the DSP program, I can add a bass knob. This potentiometer allows me to turn up the bass. Now, here's the problem. We looked at distortion earlier and we saw that there was an issue with the distortion and the issue was with this mid-range. And so I wanted to make sure that this potentiometer only affected the subwoofer. So I went ahead and added this potentiometer to just the subwoofer, meaning that when I turn that frequency range from 120 on up to 30 hertz, it doesn't affect the frequency response of the mid range at all. That's going to stay stagnant. Our distortion is going to stay down. The only thing it's going to affect is the actual subwoofer. And that was really important for me. Now, as far as the other potentiometer here, this middle potentiometer actually affects our high end response. It affects everything from one kilohertz on up to about 20 kilohertz. And then the last one is just a volume knob. Now you're going to notice this case and this case is actually a case that I designed for the 4100. Uh, this just seemed to work better for our uh, use in the essence that you can use the three potentiometers. You also have uh, the lights here that show you when your aux is plugged in. It shows you your Bluetooth, whether you're paired or not. It does have the power switch on there. It even has an aux in. And then, of course, it has our connectors on the back. Now, the two middle, I plugged up for subwoofer duty. And then I have my left and right speakers as well as a Bluetooth pairing button. I say all this because in that DSP program, uh, you have to tell it how to do that. Now, thankfully, Parts Express has come up with some pre-designed templates for you to be able to use that you can start to work with. And also, if you wanna build these specific speakers, you can actually just get the plans down in the description. And all you have to do is download the actual file, which it'll come in the plans, and just download it right to the board. You don't have to do all the back end stuff that I had to do, which by the way, takes a lot longer to do than a traditional passive crossover. So keep that in mind. After everything was said and done, I really wanted to listen to these things. And I gotta say, it's pretty amazing. You will never get to really experience this unless you build these or build something like these because that bass is just pretty incredible to be able to just kind of turn up and just let loose. It does have a nice port in the back and it's ported to get an F3 around 35 Hertz. And so you're getting basically the full range of sound with music and it, it just, it's incredible. It, it sounds great. And honestly, I've never built a speaker that I can think of that is as audiophile flat as this. And that's in thanks to the KBD 4100 by Dayton Audio. So I'm really happy that they have this. Now, a lot of people are going to ask me about that subwoofer because it's, it's so powerful. One of the concerns that we had was, was it going to move the cabinets? And the answer is yes, it did move the cabinets. So much so that I actually went out and bought these. These are these little rubber feet that the speaker sits on and this makes sure that a the cabinet doesn't bounce up and down on whatever it's on and b it doesn't move and it's not that the cabinets aren't made well the cabinets are very inert they're very good it's just that that particular he subwoofer can produce a lot of bass and these things are well they're pretty impressive do i think that we beat the 80s speakers that they were yeah i never heard those ones but i can't imagine them sounding nearly as good as these these are truly audiophile flat not only that i don't think that they would ever produce the amount of bass that these produce and although maybe that's not such an audiophile thing sure is a fun thing and when you want the bass at least you know you have it all right guys this is toyd's diy audio i'm out